Welcome to Inverkenny Junction. Today we're going to talk about getting a decent sound out of the Class 47. This was one of the first O-Gauge locos I bought over a year ago. I've bought lots of other locos since and developed sound files that I'm quite happy with. But the 47 has just never sounded right. At first I thought it was the Southwest Digital Sound File I was using. But listening to it on a hi-fi it sounds great. I mean, at the end of the day, these are all original recordings of the real thing. Eventually I come to the conclusion it was just the speakers I was using didn't have adequate bass response. Solzers all have real deep tones, and the 47 is the deepest of the lot. There's hardly any treble in the audio at all. To reproduce the sound of any diesel locomotive requires a lot of bass, but most of the others have treble in the audio which defines the characteristic of their sound. You're never going to accurately reproduce the sound of a 200 litre diesel engine with a 40 mm speaker, but in most cases you can reproduce something which at least portrays some of the characteristics of the sound. But not with a 47, because there's just so much bass and so little treble. So I've been working on this for over a year now, looking for a decent speaker that's going to give uh, the bass response I'm looking for. Well, a decent speaker that would actually fit inside a loco, that is. So the best speaker we've found so far is the ESU 50343. These can handle 2 watts RMS and have a frequency response from 150 hertz to 20 kilohertz. These sound really good for the size. We can fit one in a sort of 26, 27, and even fit two in a 37. So I tried this in the 47, but it just wasn't cutting it really. The volume was really low, and if you turn the volume up, the bass just started distorting. What the 47 really needed was a bigger version of this speaker. ESU don't supply a bigger version, so I started delving into these speakers in a bit more detail. They're manufactured by a company in China and was originally developed to go in sound bars for TVs. They do a whole range of these at different sizes and power outputs. And eventually we found one that would fit in the 47. So we ordered these up from China and here it is. It's rated at 4 watts RMS and has a frequency response down to 105 hertz. But it's big, it measures 37 by 108 by 20 millimetres. But it will fit in the Hilgen O-Gauge Class 47 and the Class 50. So here we have the 47 with a speaker fitted. You can just fit it in between the bulkhead on the number 2 end and the decoder. It's attached to the roof with 3M double sided tape. It's wired directly into the decoder with 1602 wire. The speaker has so much bass we had to add a second speaker to act as a tweeter. The 5XL decoder has two speaker outputs so we've wired the second speaker into the, the other speaker connection on the side here. We've connected this for a 100 mic cap just to act as a crude crossover just to remove the bass from the smaller speaker. We've just connected the second speaker on the uh, number one end and secured it again with 3M double-sided tape. We found this double-sided tape is the best way of securing speakers. We've tried screwing them down, but sooner or later they work loose and cause a bit of vibration, whereas the tape, as it's made of foam, uh, absorbs any vibration and stops any rattles. You'll see we've moved the fan PCB to the side of the top of the roof near the number one end. This is wired into the auxiliary 9 output. A lot of people seem to have difficulty getting the fans working correctly on Hellion Locos, but that's normally because they're trying to run them off the auxiliary 1 to 6 outputs. These outputs only have the current capacity of a few milliamps to drive LEDs, but auxiliary outputs 7 to 9 are defined as power outputs and suitable for driving motors. So this is where the fan needs to be connected. When you're wiring these, make sure you keep all the wiring clear of the motor flywheels. Even a wire touching one of these flywheels is enough to slow it and cause jerky motion. So if you like the sound of this speaker, we've now got these in stock, along with a smaller ESU speaker we've used here for the tweeter. I'll put a link below to our website if you want more details. Probably something else worth talking about here as well is how sound files need to be matched to the speakers you're actually using. In the CVs you can only adjust the overall volume. You can't adjust the bass or the treble response or the volume levels from one part of the sound file to another. 
You can, of course, adjust this if you've got a Mini SU programmer, but not everyone has. So if you're ordering up a sound file, make sure you always get the recommended speaker that it was designed to work with. We've now got different sound files for different speaker configurations, so each one is matched ideally to the speaker's frequency response. So at the end of the video here, we'll show you the full range of functions of the sound file. Be interesting to know what you think sounds good and what you think sounds not so good, so please leave any comments uh, below. We're constantly adjusting and improving these, so it's work in progress. But if you like the sound of it, we can reprogram your existing decoder with the file, or even supply a new ESU decoder with it uh, pre-programmed. And we supply a full wiring diagram with every decoder showing where all the wires go and all the interconnections. So thanks for watching so far, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Stand well away from the 
edge of platform four. The approaching train is not scheduled to stop at this station.